Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Today is Wednesday, July the 10th, 2019. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk Daniel Dubois versus Nathan Gorman. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. It's a high-risk fight, right? Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now before I go further, let me just say, look, I've never been a boxing trainer. I'm just a uh, casual fan like many of the people watching this video. But my advice to both of these guys, right, and I'm sure both of these guys have well-meaning people around them, right, but my advice to both of these guys is that they use YouTube to look up film of Vitaly Klitschko, how he leans away from punches, to look up films of Muhammad Ali, how he leans away from punches and is light on his feet. You don't quite know where he's going to be in the ring. <clears throat> to look up films of Manny Pacquiao, Right, Pacquiao, when he was a young man, was a hellacious puncher. But you'll notice that Pacquiao has a move where he just jumps backwards. Right, wherever he is, he's light on his feet. He can jump backwards. He can get away from the action. Doesn't have to turn and run. He can just jump backwards, be outside the pocket. The problem I have with both Dubois and Gorman, and both guys are unbeaten. Both guys are in their early 20s. Both guys have possibly a great future in front of them. But both of these guys are a little bit rigid, aren't they? Both of these guys lean forward, not back. Understand, you're six four, six, five. If you're fighting a guy who's six feet or 5'11", leaning back gives him almost nothing to hit. Right? I say Vitaly Klitschko more so than Vladimir Klitschko, but look at Vladimir Klitschko as well. Big time puncher. Shooting a jab, leaning back. A lot of guys couldn't reach him. Right? The goal in boxing should be to do unto others and then have them miss you. Not to get hit repeatedly. Right? Both of these guys are offensively minded. But my goodness, the guys are leaning forward. Right? You wouldn't even know that they're six, four and a half, six, five. The guys are leaning forward, they're giving up height, they're engaging. Now that works at this stage. Right? That works at this stage. When you're fighting guys who are past their prime like Kingpin Kevin Johnson. Right? That works right now. When you're just too young with too much energy for some of these guys who are long in the tooth. Or some of these guys who can't match your punching power. But I'm just telling you that as you get older, as you start to fight guys who have been around, guys who aren't yet past their primes, guys who are highly ranked contenders, if not the mandatory contender, then being rigid, leaning forward, not having the ability to do what Vitaly would do. Lean backwards, have the punches miss him. <laughs> right? Understand, Vitaly, heavy puncher. Heavy puncher. Right? But understood defense. I don't think either of these guys right now fully understands defense. Let me say this too. I know boxing's provincial. I understand guys are loyal to trainers. I understand some trainers have big reputations. Ricky Hatton, for example. Right? But people need to understand that the trainers made their reputations often 
of certain fight styles. Right? Ricky Hatton's great at collapsing the pocket, roughing you up like he did Costa Zoo. Right? Being a tough guy, getting hit, doling out punishment. What I want someone like Nathan Gorman to consider is to also do his own research. To also say to his camp, hey, I'd like to improve my defense and have a guy who does some things Ricky wouldn't do. Right? Backs away from the pocket, etc. Have a guy who's going to help me with my back foot. Now, in this fight, Daniel Dubois, in my opinion, takes this. Right? Now, dangerous fight to bet on, not for the faint of heart. I don't see this fight going the distance. Both guys have a puncher's chance. Right? Both guys do. Especially given that both guys can get lured into shootouts. Right? Just look at the third round of Richard Lardy against Daniel Dubois. Right? Look at the fact that both guys are coming forward and neither guy is up on his toes dancing. Right? There isn't, <laughs> there isn't the rounds in these guys' resumes where they said, hey, let me just win this round on my back foot. Showing elusiveness. That's not these guys. So you're going to get a high action packed fight between two young lions, both throwing a lot of shots. But Dubois, in my opinion, is the better athlete. Dubois, in my opinion, has the better jab. Right? As you look at Dubois, you'll notice he has a jab he should use more, quite frankly. Right? It's stiff. It backs a guy up. It keeps the guy at arm's length, which is where Dubois wants the guy. Right? Because Dubois is a guy who likes a little bit of space between him and his opponent. Dubois is not the kind of guy who's going to lean on you, then push off with the shoulder and hit you with a combination. He likes to have you, even when he's throwing hooks to the body, he likes to have you at a certain distance. Well, he's able to set that up better than Gorman because he has the jab to keep you at that distance. Let me also say, too, the best punch between these two guys, in my opinion, is Dubois' left hook. Right? He throws a straight right hand that looks great on film and stuff like that. But I'm noticing opponents aren't as shocked by his straight right hand as they are the left hook. There's a video here online of Dubois' first 10 KOs. And you're going to notice that a lot of them are left hooks. Right? Does it matter if he hits you up top or to the body with that left hook? Guys are surprised by it. When you're looking at highlights, don't just look at what the guy's doing. Look at what happens to the opponent. How hurt is the opponent when they hit the canvas? Right? Daniel Dubois' opponents look like they've been shot when they're hit with that left hook. These are guys who can't continue. Right? Some of the highlights, the guy's so badly hurt that the ref's trying to talk to the guy on the canvas. The guy's not even interested in the ref. You know a guy's hurt when the guy's on the canvas and the guy's looking down here, grimacing. Let me also say, too, that Dubois is more coordinated and more judge-friendly. In other words, he frames his shots, right? Gorman often, Gorman's a combination puncher. So Gorman's deep in the pocket throwing a combination. But you don't see the punch that hurts the opponent as much as you do with Dubois. Right? Dubois, for whatever reason, some guys are just gifted 
He's more photogenic than Gorman. His shots just look cleaner. You can see the cause and effect. The Lardy fight, Lardy is actually not bad. Lardy's come to fight. Lardy gets hit with a left hook. You see it. <laughs> the fight changes. He's in trouble. He's in survival mode after that. If you're a judge, you say, okay, well, I know who's doing better this round. It's Dubois. In Gorman fights, it's not as clear. In other words, guys are hanging with him a bit more. Right? There isn't that shotgun moment where the other guy looks like he's shot. Where you understand the other guy has lost the round. But, right, to people we have high expectations of. And Dubois has a bright future, as I said. Let's offer some criticism. Right? He's a bit rigid. In other words, you notice his feet have to be a certain way. Right? He wants to be a certain distance from you. Now, that works against this level of competition. What would happen if he's fighting an Ali? I know this isn't an up-on-their-toes heavyweight era, but you have guys like Alexander Usyk who can channel Ali, who has an Ali mode when he wants to, who can get up on his toes, who can move. I invite people to look at his amateur fight against Joe Joyce. What happens if a guy is moving? A guy knows that Dubois likes his feet a certain way, likes you in a certain position. So what happens when a guy is moving and says, you know what, I'm not going to be in that position. You're not going to be able to look at me and say, great, he's here, now let me throw a punch, let me hit him with my jab. Right? No, a guy's moving. Worse yet, a guy's able to lean. So Dubois is throwing punches. The guy doesn't even have to move away. He can lean. Have Dubois punch, miss him, and then Dubois is open for counters. Right? Dubois gets hit with counters, doesn't he? Dubois, worse yet, can get lured into shootouts. He beats Lardy. Everything worked for him. But there was Lardy who understood, hey, the only way I'm going to beat this young lion is if I get him to throw punches. And we start to trade. And I have a shot to land a big punch. Right? Lardy had several KOs. Well, that's exactly what Lardy did. Wasn't it? He got the ball out of his comfort zone. I'm guessing a Dylan White with Dylan White's jab would want to get Dubois, as heavy-handed as Dubois is, to throw punches, to open himself up for counters. Let's face it, too. These two young guys, they're both hunters. They're not accustomed to being the hunted. You saw Dubois get hit with some counters by Lardy. Folks, he looked in trouble to me. Another problem I have with young guys is the stamina issue. Right? I saw Dubois holding on to Lardy to catch his breath. Player, you're in your early 20s. <laughs> you're, you're fighting an old man. It's early in the fight. Right, That's the other problem. Dubois, not a lot of experience going the distance. So whereas a vet would say, man, it's the third round, it's the fourth round. I shouldn't be huffing and puffing. With these young guys... Some of them are huffing and puffing early, right? The pacing isn't quite there. Let me say this, too, about Gorman, right? He's a combination puncher. Understand that cuts both ways. He throws more punches than his opponent. He's thinking ahead of his opponent. He's a guy who can tuck an uppercut in the middle of a combination. Right? That's how combination punchers think. They're not pot shotters. It's not, hey, I see a right hand. Let me let me throw it. No, it's more like, hey, I see a combination. Their pattern recognition is different from everyone else's. Hey, I see a combination. You know what? When I throw my right hand, this guy does this. So I'm going to throw a right hand, have this guy do this. 
Then I'm going to come back with the right hand later in the combination, and the guy's going to be out of position to block it. Right? That's how Gorman thinks. The curse of being a combination puncher is unless you're Ray Leonard and you have that jump back ability. Right? Ray Leonard's throwing a combination. He's in the pocket and stuff. It gets a little hot. Ray Leonard could jump back. He has that Manny Pacquiao jump back capability. Gorman doesn't. He's deep in the pocket. It hasn't mattered yet in his career. But he's deep in the pocket and you know he's deep in the pocket. Right? A guy with defense who wants to bait him could have him jump in the pocket to throw a combination figuring hell you know I'll just block a few shots then I'll have this guy wide open in any event let's just say that these two guys are young fighters who have a lot to work on right I want people to contrast Canelo's fight against Danny Jacobs here's Canelo who I still say is one of the hardest punchers in boxing Right Here's Canelo, and what's he doing? He's hiding his upper body. In other words, as hard as Canelo hits, his mindset is, hey, I I'm not here to get hit myself. I'm trying to do lot punishment, not get punishment. So here you have a guy who has a big punch, who you would think is just in there to trade. And he's hiding his upper body from Danny Jacobs. Right? The first half of that fight's masterful. Canelo's there, he's, he's throwing punches, then he's thinking about rolling away from shots. These two young guys are a little bit too early in their careers to have figured out that they need to hide their upper bodies. Right? Dubois' defense, in my opinion, is better than Gorman's. You notice Dubois is ready to block right hands coming back. He's just not ready to make the right hand miss him entirely. In other words, whereas Canelo's fighting Danny Jacobs, and there are moments where Jacobs throws a punch and Canelo leans, punch misses him. Then Canelo, who's still close to the pocket, right? Because he hasn't run away. He's just leaned. Canelo had Danny Jacobs open for counters. Right? With these young guys, they're so accustomed to being the hunter. They're so convinced in their offensive dominance <laughs> that neither of these guys is thinking about leaning and having punches miss them. Right? Just, just look at their fights. The guys are leaning forward. It's even worse than that. Whereas a Canelo, guys like that would lean, right? Vitaly Klitschko, lean, lean away, right? Both Gorman and Dubois are leaning forward, right? Dubois likes to stand in a side profile, and you'll notice he's crouched. Rather than be a tall guy who's leveraging his height, rather than be Ali against Liston, Liston, great jab, can't even land the jab on Ali. That's how much of a lean Ali's doing. He's dancing around the ring, but when he's close to Liston and Liston's throwing a jab, you'll notice Ali just leaned. The jab is here. These young guys haven't yet figured it out. I'm hoping both of these guys, who I think have bright futures, right? I'm hoping both of these guys look at the films of masters like Vitaly Klitschko, folks, heavyweight champion for several years several years. I hope both of these guys look at films from tall fighters like Vitaly Klitschko and they notice the lean. They notice what the guys do. Right? If you're 6'5", there's no reason for you to be giving away your height leaning into the pocket. What's the point of that? Your head should be hard to find. Not there on a silver platter. If both guys bring their A game, I'm expecting Dubois to win the fight. As it is, I'm expecting a stoppage. Right? I think Dubois is the heavier puncher. I think Dubois is the guy more likely to win on the scorecards. I think Dubois has the better jab. Right? 
where it gets a little controversial is the fact that both of these guys like to throw punches and be offensive. If a shootout breaks out instead of a disciplined boxing match, then both guys have a puncher's chance. That's Gorman's best shot in this fight. To make this a shootout. Right? To have Dubois decide that he's going to trade like he did in the Lardy fight. If Dubois knows what he's doing, he shouldn't have to. He should use that jab a little bit more. Right? He should realize that that jab can win him the slow rounds. It can keep Gorman, who needs to be in the pocket, too far away from him to be effective. It should set the tempo of the fight. I like Dubois here. He's favored. But the odds are low. It's a minus 200. I'm intrigued. I like Dubois to win the fight if I had to hedge the play, and I don't plan to, but if I had to hedge the play, I would hedge it with Gorman by KO. Both of these guys have a lot of KOs, right? Both have been lured into shootouts. There is the possibility that Dubois decides he's going to get in a shootout here, and unlike Lardy, he's facing a combination puncher, which makes this dangerous. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.